Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in Catford, that's in Lewisham, where I'm just on the street now prowling, just getting some views from the average uh, Jamaican of Jamaican ancestry about the recent atrocities against young women in Jamaica. And this is to support my show. But right now I'm at Street Flavor, Street Flavor, which is in Catford here. So tune in later and you'll hear some more where we do some Fox Pop videos from average persons hearing their views and to show their support for Jamaica. I think it's killing in Jamaica, it's disgusting and I think um, the Prime Minister should do something about it because if they don't, it's, it's, it, it ain't gonna stop, it's going to continue all the time. That's all I've got to say right now. We decided at last minute to do this show due to something wrong and sinister happening in Jamaica. As you're aware, there's been a spate of young ladies missing and when found, they are not alive and their bodies are in some serious, gruesome conditions, dead. This show is to look at what we understand is happening and to see if we can shed some light as to the cause and effect and as well possible solutions. Now, at the same time, you may recall that you had domestic violence issue whereby men were killing off their partners. Then there was a pastor being found in a compromising position with a 15-year-old girl. And now we have these gruesome killing and it's like, what is going on? So therefore, we want to sort of set this cycle to a certain extent. Joining us today, we have Angela Clark, who is a qualified psychologist and psychotherapist with over 30 years experience as a clinician with adult health, social care and private sectors and Novena Channel, and make sure you pronounce her name, Novena Channel, is a London-based entrepreneur, radio host and presenter of Sierra Leone, Jamaican and Nigerian heritage. Completely mm. mixed up in a nice way. Am I right? <laughs> in a nice <laughs> way, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. Angela and Novena. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank Angela, you. I'm, going to, I'm going to start with you first. Okay. Um, you have been following what has been happening in Jamaica. Yes, I have. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, when I asked for a couple of persons to come on the show, I, I, one of the first questions I asked, do I need to brief them or are they aware, you know? Yes. Now, now tell me, what is your thought process of what's happening in Jamaica now? Um, I suppose it's probably best to start on what's happening here. I think what's mm. happening is that with the advancement of social media, what you're getting is um, these pictures that are coming through very thick and fast. Mm -hmm. Um, there is heightened awareness of things because because I don't think that I don't think that this is a new thing. Mm -hmm. I, I need to say that I don't think that um, that the killing of young children or whatever. I don't think that it's a new thing. I think that we are noticing it more because we are seeing it more. Right. It is more graphic. Is it similar to the killing of black men in the USA by police? It's not that it has increased. It's just that social media brought it to light so people are yeah, seeing more Yeah, there's a, there's a definite heightening of awareness mm. and, it's, and it's worldwide mm. because you put something on social media, it now it gets viral very, very quickly. Yes. So I don't, so I, I, I whilst I, and, and th these things happen here in the UK too, mm. so I'm not saying that it, you know, that it's, it's just happening in Jamaica, it mm. isn't, but I think what you're getting now is um, it mean, being more graphic more horrific and mm. being circulated widely mm. and and because of that you've got people's attention i think my concern however in that is that people will be, get desensitized to it and it right. will just become a run-of-the-mill normal and thing that, yeah, and that's very concerning for me right Chanel, uh, Nobina, um what, what's your thoughts on this i mean you are the founding director of the youth caterpillar project you social enterprise that provides counseling mentoring family mediation teen to parent workshop young people and families um, with a lot of young girls now being like, right now in Jamaica, I spoke to a friend last night and I said, tell me, what's going on? How are the young people? And, and he said, boss, you know, in Jamaica, people are scared. You know, he's got mm -hmm. his child, goes to a school in Monique, and his, his ex-partner, they have to monitor every little thing now. People are a bit scared. What's your thoughts on this? 
quite rightly what Angela said, that mm. it's not a new thing. So for me, it is very much that we are becoming more aware of what's going on yeah. with adults. Because we keep saying, you know, about the paedophilia and we kind of get a bit sidetracked from the fact that there's adults that are homing on young children mm -hmm. who are vulnerable. So I'm not using the pre pre ugh, reformed or yeah. preformed, that's the word, preformed yeah. relationship to actually hurt these young girls. One, it's not strangers that are taking them off the road. Yeah, exactly. Some of these people are already known to them, which yes. gives them the opportunity to actually be able to hurt them in those mm -hmm. ways. So to me, it's just it's sad, but it's just showing the state of the world as it is, yeah. really. But, 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 you know, I was speaking to someone from Jamaica, and they said that in certain areas, even in the inner city areas, you never normally have killing mm -hmm. of young girls and elderly. Mm -hmm. And as I said, bad man, them, gun man, them don't normally. They, they said one time there was a, mm -hmm. a gunfight between two turfs, two gangs, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they wanted to walk through and they stopped to let them go through. But now it's like a, a, a different sort of thing. Everybody's saying this. The, mm. but, but, the, but the thing is, you're you know, you are dealing with a different generation now. Yes. Yeah. There are some angry young people out there. Yes. And there are also some angry adults. Yes. You know, and, and you know, <sighs> We are we are dealing with, um, I suppose that the the aftermath of um, poverty. You know, when you, you need to, mm. you know, there are lots of different issues. People are going to say, well, there is just one thing why this is happening. There is not just one reason mm. why these things are happening because the people who do these things are affected in different ways. Mm. You know, and it could be childhood experiences. It could be that they just just they just want to be seen as a bad man. Mm. Uh, or you know, it could it, there, you know it could be. You, this whole initiation thing into gangs, mm -hmm. which you know, which happens, you know, this is what you need to do to join our gang. You know, all I've these kind about, of things. I've, I've been hearing so that as so, well. Yeah. So there's a whole raft of reasons why you will have a situation where you know a young child may end up dead, mm -hmm. and and it's sad, and it and it's and it's distressing, and it's and it's tragic, and you know, to to to, to kind of try and fit it into a neat little package to mm -hmm. say, well, this is why it's happening. You're not going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. No, no, I'm Chanel. In making a comparison with the UK now, with young people, young girls, and with Jamaica, is mm. because you're right. It's a worldwide phenomenon. Definitely. It's not, but it's just that social media is, is bringing everything to like to, to this global world. Even though some are trying to bring walls to separate mm. the world, you know mm. what I mean. But with that, is there that similarity at the same time with the UK and with Jamaica with young with young girls? Yeah. What do you mean with young girls? When I say young girls, I mean to say being preyed upon. But oh, adults. Most definitely. Like I said, it's it's happened it's been happening from the twelfth century. We had the age of consent for, for marriage was twelve for young women, fourteen for boys. Mm. It's quite known that for adults seeing young children, I do think that I don't think you can make it one thing, but I do think it's about power for a lot of people mm. and feeling out of control. And the best way to get control is to go upon somebody who is vulnerable, who is in a situation where actually you can then assert for men, masculinity, for women, it's that control as well. So I think, yes, I think mm. there is similarities wherever you go in the world. Mm. There are similarities in the young girls. I think some of it also is how we look upon paedophilia. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I can't speak for everybody back home. As yeah. you know, I'm of African and Caribbean, yeah. but we don't, sometimes we don't see it as paedophilia. A lot of it does go into the family system. Most have an uncle who no one mm. wants their children to be left with too much mm. because they know that the uncle is a little bit Shady. Mm -hmm. There is something there. I know that for my friends who are of Caribbean descent, we spoke a lot about this over the weekend, mm -hmm. um, the previous weekend, they're saying that there's always someone who's close to the family, an uncle or a male family mm -hmm. member who will pay for the school fees or come and help mum bring a bit of shopping. Mm -hmm. So there's that kind of unspoken thing there that mm -hmm. you can't speak out when yeah. this uncle who's helping the family might be touching you or might do yeah. something. That happens in this country. So it is like this massive open secret that everybody knows but nobody is yeah. saying. Don't, and, don't speak on it. And, and you're right, it's not a now thing. It's mm. not a now thing. I mean, young children have been preyed upon mm. for, for, for centuries. It's, it's, it's not mm. a now thing. And, but what I do think is that um, what, we've, what we have done, um, you know, we, we have made kind of sex and sex appeal and all that thing so, so high on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Everything you do to sell a car, you're looking at something sexual. Mm. To yeah, a lady has to just crawl on the car. Do or you get what like I mean? That, yeah. you, you have all of that. You have the fact that um, because. You know, it doesn't matter what country you go to, you know, mm. 
it, you know, you go to the countries around the world and on the TV, the programs are the same. It's mm. almost as if we're all being kind of conditioned mm. to think the same way, to expect the same things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, young girls are thinking that they have to, they have to dress scantily. They have mm. to look sexy. They have to, you know, there's, you know, there's no, you know, if you look at after the first generation who came here to this mm. country, in the UK now I'm talking, mm. um, when we came, you know, we looked a certain way. We looked mm. elegant. We dressed properly. We were covered. We, mm. you know, you look at it nowadays, and it's a total, it's a totally, di yeah. totally different look. But, it's but, almost mm. as if we don't even have an identity yeah. anymore. We just wear anything. But, 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 but according to what you're saying, then you're you're somewhat put in somewhat of the blame on how people dress or, or young girls dress to a certain way. I mean, what no, about, what no. about, the, what about the, the pastor um, who is somewhat deemed no. as the... No, what uh, I'm saying yeah. is, what I'm, not, I'm not saying yeah. that. What I'm actually saying is what we are doing is making people feel um, inferior, yeah. feel as if they have to be a certain way. And because of that, they then become vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost that like the young girls feel they have to be grown. They feel know? that they have to be a certain way, so therefore they become yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. They become prey. So, so it, I'm not it, saying it, that. It's, it, so it's it's like a grooming process at the same time. One hundred percent, it is that. It's sense. grooming is coming from all different angles, not just that person there who is. But you look. At, the, yeah. But you look at what we do in the UK. We have you know under the umbrella of um, sexual exploitation, mm. you know mm. child sexual exploitation. They've given it a label, CSE. You know that's mm. that's what it is, and and there is this whole grooming process. Mm. You know you look at what 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 social media has done now. It's opened a whole hornet's nest mm. where you've got chat lines, date lines, mm. da, 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 da. You, you know, and you've got, you have your young children on the internet and they could be talking to people and you don't know who they're talking to. Especially when to. they want to get these new games whereby they can talk, you don't know who is that 50-year-old no. man acting as if he's a 60-year-old or 10-year-old talking to A lot to of the child. parents don't understand the technology yeah. to actually be able to really police what they're doing because yeah. they've got no idea how to use half yeah. the devices themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Pixel, listen, why we come on here is to talk about Jamaica and right. the recent um, atrocities against young ladies then being killed. What's your view? What's your take on that, Pixel? Well, my view is, it, um, is that um, the crime situation in Jamaica, it needs to be contained. Mm -hmm. It needs to have a system to put in place. Yes. No longer to that approach. Yes. And I believe there is only one police com com commissioner that could be a, a, that could be a, a appointed to get that job done. The Trinity? No, ready to act. Ready to act. <laughs> there's not a doubt. Ready to. Ready no to nonsense. Adams, yeah. No nonsense. But well, the, but the killings about the girls isn't something about after the fact. I mean, is that a is the killing of the girls a part of the, the normal criminal element or is something a bit different? Well, it is very unusual, but I haven't got the evidence to support the uh, allegation that this is um, they are paid to do organ harvesting. I'm using this occasion to say to Jamaica, we are on the cusp of success. We are on the runway to take off. The obstacle in our way is crime and violence. That's the obstacle. We are not going to overcome this by the police alone, by the security forces alone. It has to be a joint cooperative partnership effort between the government, the security forces, and the citizens. But what is the psychology, and this is the thing where people, what is the psychology of men, people in um, positions of trust? I mean, it's like a rec broken recorded tape because we hear it all the while. Mm -hmm. What would make them actually prey on young 15, 13 year old girls, boys as well, from a psychological perspective. Like I said, you're not, 
<laughs> like I said, you're not going to get one answer to that right. question. There are a number of reasons why people do what they do. Mm. We're talking, you know, and I know that we're talking, you're saying men. Yeah. Um, yeah. Women do it too. Yeah. Exactly. I want you to know mm. that. It's, it's, it's Break not, down the woman aspect. Cause it's, like, not a, that's, it's not that, a one way That's speak. like a little taboo era whereby they, they always they say, these men, these men, that I had to put on something the other day, but I said, hang on a second, just to let you record, it's not all men <laughs> who are preying on the girls. This is why I say, I mean? it's, yeah, because it's dangerous to generalise and, yeah. and, and I would hate to, for anybody to think that I'm sitting here and saying it, you know, it's all about the men or it's all about the women because that's not what it's about. Mm. Um, but, I, but I still stand by when I say that it's, it's going to be very difficult for you to come up with one reason, mm. you know, psychologically why someone does that. People do it through all different reasons. Mm. Power. It could be for power. It could be that as children, they were treated a certain way and so therefore it's learnt mm. behaviour. Mm. There are all sorts of reasons why people do mm. the way, do the things that they do. Um, you know, we, even the thing that you raised about pastors, it's mm. not a now thing that pastors have been, mm. de you know, do, you know, pastors are people. Yeah. You know, they have a label. It's just like the police. So, so, so what we're saying, it's not about the pastor, it's not about the police, it's about people. People are people. So what the grooming then, okay, let's, okay, so therefore it's, there, it will always be there, but how then can the young people, the young girl that we are speaking, that may be watching, how can they pick up when they are being groomed? What are some of the signs? The, right, so that, that's, that is a difficult one because a, a, a young woman or a, a child in it, mm. they won't see it as grooming. Mm. You know, they, they won't stay, they won't, they will see it as be someone befriending them, for example, mm. you know, until they're being asked to do something that they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with that. What I would say is I'm working with a lot of children who have survivors of abuse. Sometimes mm. it's not that you don't want to do it, sometimes they do, but you don't understand what's going on. Mm. Yeah. I've explained to a male client who have been abused and they can't understand why they have, not a daytime show, but when, why they've actually been aroused by it. Yeah. I have to explain that your body and your mind mm. are different systems. Mm. So sometimes these groomers know more about the children than most social workers and educational psychologists. Mm. So like I said, it is about people. They go into roles of police, mm. football coaches, mm -hmm. where they get access to we children. We had a football issue recently. Right. Yeah. It's about exactly. access to children, access. understanding children. So I know my newborn son, I mm. stroke the back of his neck, he absolutely loves it. Mm. Somebody else who's coming in to harm a child will know that actually, if I do that, it feels nice to this yeah. young boy or yeah. girl. Mm. They're going to like it. You yeah. just have to understand as we do as adults, mm. this is a sexual thing. It's just a pleasurable thing. Yes, yes. And I think when we keep saying they don't want to do things, we then make children and young people feel guilty mm. that they have gone along with it, they've colluded with it. Mm. But actually, and that's one of the reasons why they sometimes don't want to say Come and tell it to us, because we say, well, did you, did you tell them to stop? Did you like it? Well, yeah, nobody did exactly. actually like the way that felt, mm. but it doesn't mean it's okay. That yeah. person was in a position of authority or power over you, and they should know better. Mm -hmm. You're just a child, you're just a young person, it's yeah. okay. But we need to remove that, you know, if it feels really awful, you shouldn't like yeah. it. It's more mm. about the dynamic of this person who should know better. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, I mean to say that mm. the, uh, people sometimes say the state is, does the role of protection of children Jamaica, UK, wherever, rest with who? The state, the children, the parents? Is there a, bro is, is there a group that you say you are the, at the highest level of responsibility? The parents, the state, school? I think the, the reality <laughs> is that our children go into, into different environments. Yeah. And I think that in every environment that a child is, the person who is there in that environment is responsible for that child. Mm. So I think the safeguarding of a child is, of course, the role of the parent, but it's also the mm. role, role of the community. It's the role of the state. It's everybody's, yeah. it's everybody's business. I don't think any one person, because when I, you know, you, know, you, you send your child to school, mm. so therefore you are passing the responsibility on to the state. state. You know, your child will go to a youth club. You're therefore passing that responsibility on to the members of the yeah. community. So therefore, mm. everybody has mm. everybody has to have responsibility. Safeguarding is something that cannot be ignored by anybody, nor yes. should it be. Yes. 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 Angela Clark, tell us, what do you do? What do I do? Yeah. Um, I do lots of things. Mm. Um, I'm a psychologist and a psychotherapist by profession. Yes. Um, more recently, um, I've managed um, adult health um, and social care yes. services for local authority. 
but my, with my community hat on, mm -hmm. um, I am national executive director for a charity called Rafa. Okay. Actually, Rudy Page. Yes, Rudy He has Rudy passed Page. the button to you. Rudy Page has <laughs> passed the button to me. Yes. That's right. Yes. So my responsibility is to um, increase um, awareness about so the requirement of social mm. action in our communities. And for Jamaicans maybe watching and saying, how oh, do these people, are they Jamaicans doing anything? What's your Jamaican roots? Uh, my Jamaican roots, both my parents um, are Jamaican. Yeah. Um, my father was born in Kingston, my mother from St. Elizabeth. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, I am second generation. And you're passionate about what's going on in Jamaica? Definitely, right? definitely. Yeah. I mean, um, Rudy is dealing with, um, obviously, the Jamaican diaspora yeah. and, and do, dealing Legacy with Legacy 55, yeah. And, the, and yeah, and the Jamaica 55 mm. um, is something that I will be definitely heavily involved with for, um, for the year. But, but, part, but part of that will be, the whole passing the baton thing will be dealing with the young people. Yes. Um, and hopefully getting the young people of Jamaican heritage and those in Jamaica involved as well. That's, okay. that's the aim. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And Novena Chanel, you're mm -hmm. very diverse, yes. And yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, Novena Chanel, so I'm also known as the Equilibrium Coach mm -hmm. because I'm a registered counsellor. Yes. I'm also a life coach and nutritional advisor. Yes. As you've already said, thank you. I'm a director of the Youth Cats Builder Project. So we work in the community with families and their children mm -hmm. and outside relatives as well to look at family mediation and mentoring and mm -hmm. workshops. Um, where am I from? Yeah, if, yeah, a couple people say, are you sure you Jamaica? St. Yeah. Elizabeth, my grandmother's from St. Elizabeth. My oh. grandfather is, he's a mixture of Manchester and is it Mandeville? Well, I haven't, Mand I haven't Mand been. Mand Mand Manchester and Mandeville is linked together. So yeah. that's where they're from. My, Maternal side are Sierra Leone and Nigeria. We are the mm. Igbos of Nigeria. Okay. Ah. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's so funny because uh, 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 Lord, going to that now, we talk about another time about roots. You know, I was saying to somebody mm. the other day that, uh, you know, you could, I was saying to somebody of a Nigerian um, ancestry, who was Nigerian, I said, you could actually be a part of my bloodline. 100%. You know, directly, you know. Mm. Uh, I came through from the Caribbean back to the UK. You come from Nigeria, here, mm. I went through the process of slavery through my four parents. Mm -hmm. You didn't, but we are here, and mm. you could actually be my bloodline. I was just saying that. So mm. you've got this link up now whereby you've got Sierra Leone, Nigerian, and Jamaican, so that, mm. that's very powerful, you know? Mm. Pama, listen, with what is happening now in Jamaica now, what are your thoughts and your views about this whole thing? Well, my thoughts and my views about the whole thing is, you know what I mean, is... I wonder why people just can't think positive and, you know what I mean, just think, stop the negativity. And mm. Even like them say a taxi driver and things like that, carry out them thing there. Why the taxi people them just can't just know so well then, leave the girl child them alone, let mm. the girl child them grow up, I mean, yeah. Kids are the future of the world, yeah. innit? Yeah. So, why them just feel so them should have disturbed the kid them? I mean, yeah. not even disturb them, but, but killing them. Yeah. It's, it's so funny you said that because years ago in Jamaica, even gunmen or whatever would not be killing children or that's, old people, but now there's yeah, something that's, that's what we are saying. That's what, that's what exactly what we're saying. I mean, think about it. If a man say, I'm a bad man, bad mm. man a hurt kid. Yeah. Bad man take care of a kid, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Bad man take care of a picnic. Yeah. Just like you take care of a woman, when mm -hmm. you live within your house, you have kids. Yeah. So yeah. you go take care of the kids, you know, go, go to the street and disturb the kid and rape the kid and kill the kid yeah. and yeah. throw them a bush, you know what I mean? Like, what they are, they are somebody, they are not, they, it's not animal. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a quick break and come back where we'll talk more about Jamaica and what are some of the solutions in rectifying this wrong? My concern is that if we don't, and if we don't see it as a responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, similar to the whole passing the baton, mm -hmm. um, I, I feel that if I don't pass on that legacy to my children, yes. and, the cho and the, my children know their heritage, then, uh, you know, in this country there mm -hmm. is a risk that um, our very heritage will mm -hmm. die out. The government is the employer of the people. The people employ the government to take care of the country and take care of them. So if the government not taking care of the people who yeah. put him in where he is, yes. who is going to do it? Growing up as a young kid, when I was small, probably five years old, yeah. they used to have um, you know, rumours going around. There's um, 
people kidnapping kids, sweet man, you know, things like that, you know, the apartment. <coughs> but I, I don't know because it's this absurd in yes. abducting young women and killing yes. them and you know, and raping and killing them. It's getting it's getting out of hand, yeah, and it just come come just come like that from out of yes. the blue. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like. And don't forget to comment, but first subscribe.